Who doesn't love a good pancake? That's why we're going to name this the pancake method, so you can do some calculus and daydream about a wonderful breakfast. If you looked at this method that you're going to learn in a calculus book, it would probably be, probably be called circular disks, but I think you can agree with me that this is a catchier name. You'll see why this is happening as we go through this. So It's going to be a weird concept. You're going to have to open up your imagination. I'm going to take a fairly cooperative function, y equals sine of x, over 0 to pi. So even though sine of x goes forever and ever up and down, we're just using this section from 0 to pi. And in the recent calculus life of yours, you've been taking this region and finding the area. This would just be a straightforward integration with respect to the x-axis. But that's not what we're going to do here. You have to break out your imagination because this region, you have to imagine that it rotates about the x-axis. So in other words, pretend like I could take my fingers and go twisting it back and forth. That's not working out too well. but and as I'm twisting the axis around, this region is rotating. So if I did it really fast, like you would see that region spinning around so fast it was just a blur. And your job is to imagine what would that figure look like if that were rotating around in a blur. So I chose sine of x because I think that figure rotated around would look kind of like a football, a three-dimensional football. Our job is to not find the area of this region, but to find the volume of this football. The problems would be stated something like this. Find the volume of the figure created when the function is rotated about the x-axis. You read that. You realize we're looking for volume, so now you need a three-dimensional figure. And in this case, what you're going to do is imagine that football now, and imagine taking a slice right through that football. A paper-thin slice, don't worry, the football is not going to deflate. And that paper-thin slice, if you were to Pull that paper-thin slice right out of your figure and look at what that slice looked like, that slice would be a perfect circle. If you did a slice right here, it would also be a perfect circle, it would just be really tiny. If you did a slice right here, it would be slightly larger than this slice. And with a good imagination and maybe the help of my drawing here, you can see that this football is actually made up of a whole bunch of circles placed right next to each other. So the concept is, if I could integrate the area of all those circles, or in other words, if I can total up, accumulate, add them up, all those circles areas, I would have the volume of that figure. This is a very deep concept. The accumulation of all those circles ends up giving me the volume of that figure. All right, if your brain can imagine that, then the rest of this problem is going to be straight, relatively straightforward. I'm going to use this concept All right, so I've redrawn that figure. And you have to remember that the three-dimensional figure actually goes down here because we're imagining that it's rotating about that axis. Um, and so any slice right through there represents a circle. And by the way, if, I, if that's a circle, then this distance right there that's the radius, because if I took this slice over here and I kind of tried to draw it three-dimensionally over here, that's that slice, 
that's the radius of that circle. All right, so from beginning to end, I will accumulate a bunch of the areas of circles. And if this is one good slice, I think about where would the other good slices be? And they would go like this. They go. So as I'm making those slices, each slice that I, each new slice that I do, I'm further along the x axis. So I'm progressing along the x axis with my slices. That's what makes this a dx problem. That means my very first slice was right here. I began at zero. As I was slicing along the x-axis, my last slice happened here. We know sine hits the x-axis again at pi. So from zero to pi, let's take a bunch of pi r squareds as I travel along the x-axis. Well, that y is really this radius. Because if I think about this radius, it's right there. That's a y value because it's a distance from the x-axis up to a function. That's a y value in algebra. So instead of writing r squared, I write y squared. But notice that this is a y, and we said this is a dx problem. That tells me that the y is an unwelcomed variable. I want x variables. Well, lucky for us, this is an easy switch. This is the equation y equals sine of x. So I can replace y with the sine of x. I can replace y with the sine of x. Do you hear that blue jay? He's angry. He's still angry. OK, so at this stage, I've got a full integral. It's with respect to x. I'm using the variable x. I'm beginning and ending along the x-axis. So I can just take this, plug this into my calculator, and I have it. By the way, just so you know or remember, this prob this integral can be rewritten. This is a constant coefficient, so I can put it out in front. This can also be written using this type of notation. And my answer could even be written like that. The reason I'm telling you this is very frequently these types of problems on an AP test they don't necessarily want you to work out a final answer. They will often say, write an integral to represent the volume of that figure. Or if it's a multiple choice question, they might say, choose an integral that represents the volume of that figure, in which case they very well might write it like this or like this. OK, I've set up a new problem. And in this case, I have a very friendly equation, y equals x squared minus 4. And there's a region trapped between this function and the x-axis. It's the red polka dot. And what we want to do is we want to find the volume when this region is rotated about the y-axis. So again, imagine like we did before that you could take that axis, in this case the y-axis, and twist it. As I twist it, this region rotates about the y-axis, and you get a three-dimensional figure. Pause the video to try to see if you can imagine or sketch what that figure looks like. I've revealed my sketch down below. This thing kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, a bowl with a very frustrating bottom. Uh, or the tip of a bullet. I don't know what this thing looks like, but it's something that definitely could hold some water if you put some water in there. I need to find the volume of this figure, and so now I think to myself, on that first problem, we did vertical slices up and down. But if I did a vertical slice here, which would show up like this, and I thought about what that slice would look like if I removed it from the figure, it would not look like a circle. If it doesn't look like a circle, I can't use the pancake method or the circular disk method. But if I choose to slice this way, then you see what that slice looks like here. If 
I were to carefully slide that paper thin slice out of that three dimensional figure, I'd be holding a very thin circle. If I can do that with one slice, I can do that with an infinite number of slices, and I would have an infinite number of circles. So I move on to this. There's a lot of information there, so stick with me. I'm going to go from beginning slice to ending slice and accumulate a bunch of circles. Since I've decided I need to slice this way, I'm traveling along the y-axis, which means this number and this number have to be my beginning and ending point on the y-axis. I start down here at negative 4 by thinking about that equation. In this case, they would have given us this line y equals 5 in the problem. So there's my beginning and ending. This radius, which is that radius right there, that's technically an x value because it's a distance from the y-axis over to the function. Ever since your pre-algebra days, that's been what an x value is. It's a distance from the y-axis over to a spot. So I have to write an x there, but I realize that that's naughty. So then I say, okay, can I replace the x? Yeah. If I go ahead and turn this into an x equals equation, which I did, now I can write it as a y variable. So I would call this, if I turn that into an x equals equation, it's y plus 4. So instead of writing x squared, I write square root of y plus 4 squared. Now some of you would know that, hey, square root of y plus 4 when I squared is just y plus 4. That's fine if you notice that. It's going to save you a little bit of uh, punching numbers into the calculator. Here's my algebra for that, by the way. When I work this out, there's the volume. I could put it in that form if I want as well. But this integral tells me the volume of this figure. The AP might ask you for an actual number, or they might ask you to stop at the integral stage. So this one was with respect to the y-axis, or rotated around the y-axis. The previous one was with respect to the x-axis. I'm going to show you one more problem, and in this case, the radius is going to be troublesome. That's foreshadowing. Okay, here comes trouble. We have a region. On top, it's y equals 9. On the bottom is y equals x squared. And we get this region over here. But what we're going to do, I didn't bother to write out what the AP would write this as, but we're going to rotate this about the line y equals 9. In the other problems, we rotate it about the x or the y axis. So as I rotate this about the line y equals 9, I have to think about, as that goes around, I get a three-dimensional figure. There's my three-dimensional figure. This thing has volume. The next thing I have to think about is what would be a good slice. Slicing this way, which would show up like this on this figure, that would be bad because any one of those individual slices would not give me a perfect circle. If I slice this way, vertically, now I get a perfect circle. If I did a three-dimensional impression here, that is the circle that if I carefully pulled that slice out of that figure, I'd be holding that perfect circle. But I told you the radius was going to be our enemy here. Here's my radius. There's my radius in the three-dimensional figure. But there's something different about this radius compared to the other problems we've done. Let's ignore that for a second. Beginning to end, pi r squared. Here's my first slice. There's my last slice. By doing a little algebra, I realize that that intersects at x equals 3. My first slice happens at x equals 0 pi r squared, pi r squared. But you notice I wrote y like here. In the previous problems, we said if the radius is going up and down, that's a y value. But be super, super careful here. 
technically, according to your Algebra 1 teacher, this is a y value, a distance from the x-axis up, sorry, this is a y value, distance from the x-axis up to the function. This r is going up and down, but it doesn't meet the definition of a y value from Algebra 1 because it goes from one function to another function. So I call this r a y-like value. Let's take a second just to take a look at this. See that spot right there? The distance from the x-axis up to that spot is a y value. The distance from the y-axis over to that spot is an x value. That's what you've done in algebra since the good old days of sixth or seventh grade, probably. All right, but now look at this. This distance right here is going left and right like an x value, but it doesn't travel from the axis to the function. Instead, it travels a different left to right region, so I'm going to call that informally an x-like value. Likewise, this is going up and down, but it doesn't originate on the axis, so we have to call it a y-like value. For that reason, this radius, or that radius, that is a y-like value. This is trouble for people in the beginning. So now to figure out what to write there, I do this little bit of segment subtraction. I know oops, that entire distance is 9. And I know this distance that I don't want is y. So the whole distance 9 minus this part y that I don't want leaves me with the part I do want. 9, or sorry, 9 take away y leaves me with the r. 9 take away y is really that r. It's a big deal right there. And then finally, since I knew this was a dx problem because my first slice and my last slice showed me slicing or progressing along the x-axis, I know that that y is naughty, so I take that y and replace it. Well, y is the same thing as x squared, so that y turns into that. Um, ooh, looks like I made a mistake. See that squared right there? I need to remember to put it there as well, which makes me wonder if I caught that when I put this into my calculator. So I'm going to say I don't know if that's the right answer, but I kind of don't care because this is an example of how the AP would say, hey, write the integral that leads to the volume of that figure. And this is my radius squared. This is my radius squared. The lesson to learn here is your radius isn't always going to be an x value or a y value. It might be x-like or y-like. As you can tell, the pancake method, it takes a little bit of brain power, but you know it is delicious. Catch you later.